so excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. For somebody that's been living under a rock for the last 15 years, tell my people a little bit about yourself. Well, look, man, this is as, I'd say a bigger honor for me because when I first got into this industry, you know, I started scouring the dark web at the time. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff out there, but guys like uh, Louis Simmons, Joe DeFranco, and then I came upon this product called Magnificent Mobility yes, with sir. legends named Mike Roberts and Eric Cressy. And what stood out to me immediately with you guys was the professionalism, the attention to detail. And again, I think what has always separated you from other people out there in this business, and I, we talked about this recently on a FaceTime, a lot of people can see the start and the finish. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people can see the steps in between. You have an engineer's yes. mind and you approach your programming and coaching that way. Um, so you, you have been and will always be one of my all time favorite fit pros. And uh, in terms of how I got started, you know, it's, it's a Thanks, here, here's the short story. Uh, grew up kind of a fat kid, uh, got into weightlifting when I was 14 years old. I had a powerlifting football coach who just. He got me hooked and he was, for me, as someone who grew up in a really uh, dysfunctional, abusive household, he was this positive male role model figure to me that basically just, he, he activated me, man. Like he, he yeah. taught me the ability to just, I can change my body, I can change my mind, I can change the, my whole approach to things. And it unlocked for me, you know, eventually being able to play college football. Uh, I met my wife in college. Um, and while I was there, double majoring in economics and sociology, I'm like, man, I, what am, I can't do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this stuff. And I asked myself, what, what is it for me that I have to, you know, when I wake up every day, what, what, what's like something that has to get done as part of my DNA? And frankly, it was working out. It was movement. So right then and there, around 2004 at Amherst College, I'm like, you know what, man? I just want to get paid to lift. I want to get paid to subsidize my supplements. And it <laughs> unlocked for me this incredible journey. You know, and we, we both have been on this incredible journey. A lot of this is about timing. You and I got started just around the time of the birth of social media, the birth of the yeah. uh, original online trainer. Right. And, uh, you know, I guess going through the whole process, I started doing, uh, I, I was training students and professors in college. And then I sold my first $100 program that I wrote up and yeah. gave this I'm like okay this is this this could be something right I went back home to Milwaukee Wisconsin where I'm from uh started doing personal training with uh people in my network from my old high school and then you know went to corporate boot camps community boot camps uh started doing online stuff where you know really very few people were involved in the space at the time around 2008 and then uh fast track into it became the fitness director for the men's health brand uh, for some people, you could say that was the pinnacle uh, of my career. Uh, I thought it was at the time. Sure. Having you know been seven years now since I've left and went on my own to kind of do my own thing. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, over the course of the show. It really was just getting started. I feel now at 41, I'm just really getting started in this space because the first 20 years, bro, I have no idea what I was doing. There's no blueprint for yeah. this. <laughs> uh, and the reality is you have to get enough repetition, enough mistakes and failures in place to know, A, what it is that you actually want to do, what it is that you are uniquely gifted at, and ultimately, you know, what, what lifts you up and what gets you going to wake up every single morning. Like for this, for me, to talk to someone like you, because I've been on shows like this and it's like, they don't know what questions to ask. Right. You know, like this yeah. is going to be a high level conversation. We live this stuff. Right. We love this stuff. <laughs> uh, it's, it's unlocked for us this amazing lifestyle. Like I live in Palm Springs, man. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, tw tw even 10 years ago, I'd be freezing right now. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I'm jumping in the pool right after this, taking a beautiful walk in the desert. And uh, anything's possible if you have the vision and self-belief. And, uh, you know, that's really what I hope we can inspire. Because coaches need inspiration right now, man. We'll talk more yeah. about that, too. Yeah. No, I agreed wholeheartedly. And it's so funny you mentioned talking about training, like the one thing you have to do. I did a show like when I first started, it was a solo show and I called it like Keystone Habits, right? Everybody's got a Keystone Habit. And then I heard somebody else called a Domino Habit. And that's probably a better word. You know, it's like it, it works in your brain and somebody says it better. You're like, yeah, it's better. But it's a Domino Habit, right? 
because what happens is you push the training thing over, right? Pushing the training domino over unlocks, oh, why just train? I should eat better. Well, now I'm eating better. I should sleep more. You know, like it just unlocks all those things for you. So I love that. And you couldn't be more right. Like fitness pros as a whole right now, we need people lifting us up. The last four years, myself included, right? Like if you're a fitness pro and you made it through COVID and you're still doing this now, like kudos and props to you because this is not an easy game to play. So what I'd love to hear next, what's new since the last time we chatted? Because not not since our little FaceTime, because we did like a 45 minute FaceTime just to catch up and prep for this. But like last time you were on the show, it's probably been four or five years. So what's new with you since then? You know, man, a lot has happened. Uh, obviously, everyone went through this global pandemic, you know, and I think the repercussions of it are just coming to fruition in terms of what it's done to our overall psyches, what it's done to our social skills, uh, you know, what it's done to our perspectives. So if you're at, I guess one thing is now I'm old. I'm an old man (laughs) in a young man's game. And you know what? I went through uh, a midlife crisis. Like I think a lot of people do with this because again, a a lot of what, um, I tried to separate myself in this space over the years was, you know, I wanted to be a triple threat. I wanted to be, you know, in basketball, it's pass, shoot, dribble. And right. what we do, it's film, write, speak. And then yeah. on top of that, when you can add the X factor, and by the way, the X factor, that's unique to your DNA. Yep. Everyone's got it because there's no one else like you on planet Earth except you. We're right. all, we were similar. You know, you might even have, they, there's twins. Let's let's go to the NBA, the, the Lopez brothers. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're twins. Yeah, they're different players. Absolutely. Right. So there's environment, there's work ethic, and and, and there's ultimately passion. Um, so you know, my perspective has changed uh, dramatically because you know I was like, man, I'm getting old. People are people going to want to see me with my shirt off anymore? Sure. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and and you know, I'm also unfortunately as you get older. Uh, the, the things that used to pull me, like proving people wrong, um, you know, like showing the haters, you know, uh, get, getting praised. Like, I'm no longer motivated by that, unfortunately, because those those really drove me, bro. I was like, I'm from right. the Michael Jordan. Like, I'm going to make this personal. Yeah. And I'm going I'm to spend 10 to 20 years if I have to proving you wrong. And now I'm like, yeah, man, I don't want to do this. How do I get up for this? Yeah, so such my motivation has had to really shift. Um, you know, and, and went through some real mental health issues uh, and had to kind of fight through that because uh, I think the pandemic for a lot of us, it, you know, we, we started, a lot of people started looking more inside and we had the ability to pause a bit. And my whole career was about building a name, a brand, the special lifestyle for my wife and I getting out of my home and, and like finding a place of stability and happiness. Uh, and then once like you kind of started achieving your goals all of a sudden, all these things from the past, mm. you know, like you can, you, you, yeah. you can really run from your past for so long, right? Yeah. And, and that's what happened for me. And, and the beauty of it is it was, there's a lot of pain. It was a lot of self-reflection, but I'm happy to say I got on the other side of it now. And now I'm actually excited to be old because yeah. with age comes wisdom. With age yep. comes knowledge and experience. With, with age comes that Michael Jordan fadeaway phase of your career. You know what spots to pick. You know how to pace yourself. You know what things to say no to. You know what things like this show. I was excited for a full week coming onto this show because I realized the opportunity. What you've had to do your whole life, your whole career to build the following you have. You know, the respect from your peers, the ability to come on your show and share my wisdom, my unique experiences with your audience. I got up for this. So I'm up for this. And and so that's, that's unique to uh, this age and, you know, at the first 40 years, and I think particularly speaking to men now for a second here, we take a very, very long time to mature. The first 40 years <laughs> of our life, our egos, they drive us to achieve great things, but they also just keep allowing us to sabotage ourselves and they keep allowing us to, uh, they keep just getting in the way of what is actually absolutely possible as yeah. men. So, you know, now that I know, um, you know, like one, one quote here from, uh, we got a lot of coaches, athletes listening. Coach K, right? The Redeem team. And you get guys, you get just a collection of talent and egos in that room. Yeah. LeBron James, you know, Anthony Davis, 
I mean, you name it. And then the black man himself, Kobe Bryant. How yeah. do you manage all those egos? And on day one of practice, because I saw this Netflix documentary, he said, look, I don't want you to put your egos to the side. Your egos are what got you here. That resilience, mm. that mentality. But at the same time, too, we can't let that get in the way of doing something great. You know what I'm that's saying? Cool. And I yeah, think that's in, really in cool. fitness, in, right, in fitness in particular, uh, whether it's your own personal achievements or you're constantly worrying about what your peers think about what you're doing, like, are they going to think I'm a fraud? Are they think I'm a fake? Are they going to insult my unique approach? Or trying to prove someone, like, I can lift this weight, I can do this at the expense of my joints, at the expense of actual meaningful progress in and out of the gym. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll impart that wisdom on uh, men of a certain age. Because uh, in, in all honesty, like, this is the master stage. This is, this is what we work. Yeah. Like, you can look yeah. at it, okay, my, I'm, I'm losing hair or I'm, I'm getting grays or, you know, the skin is starting to drop a little bit. <laughs> you know, like, right, right. whatever it is. Um, but you could also look at it as, okay, th this is what I've worked for. And it's all about perspective, man. It really is. Like, I found myself at one point, like, hating what I did. And I'm like, bro, like, do you remember when you had to, used to wake up at 4.30 a.m. and then go to, it's below zero. And I got to go and motivate these people in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to work out, uh, pulling teeth. And, and now <laughs> I, I, I wake up without an alarm. You know, I pick and choose what I want to do. Uh, it's not all, you know, it's not all roses, but the reality is like this is this is to 99.9% .9 of the population, the dream job, the dream lifestyle, particularly in this space. But how am yeah. I allowing myself to feel sorry for myself and, and to complain and whine? So, you know, I think a lot of us have gone through that period or will. And, uh, you know, the, the reality is you just got to find a way to get on the other side uh, and, and just basically every day find perspective and keep refining your mindset because, you know, uh, th that's really th the hardest part with a lot of this is, um, you know, w w as you improve your life and you get uh, more comforts and conveniences, you get so soft. Yeah. I'm like, how yes. did I get so soft, Mike? Right. And, I know. Uh, you know, that's why you got to keep finding ways to harden yourself. And that, that is what daily, whether it's daily training, daily movement, whatever it is for you. It's this habit, it's, it's this ritual of just not allowing yourself to make life too easy. Yeah, I think that's part of the uh, the allure of the cold plunges. You know, the people that are like, I don't know if you're a cold plunge guy, I'll do like the cold showers, but like people that are like, first thing in the morning, I'm getting in the cold plunge. I think there's something to that just as far as like, hey, mentally, I don't wanna do this, but I'm gonna make myself do it anyway. But you said two things that really stuck out, and I think it's great advice for young coaches, first of all, number one, there's no blueprint, right? We're making all this up as we go. Think about how young our industry is. Like if you're accountant Andy, you go and you become a junior accountant and then maybe a senior accountant. I don't know how that world works, but there's a hierarchy to that versus FitPro. Well, you could be a strength coach. You could be a personal trainer. You could be an online coach, social media influencer. Like there is no blueprint for what we do. So we're all making it up as we go. So if you're a young coach and you don't know what you're going to do or how this is going to work out, hey man, just kind of focus on the process and things will happen. And that's the other part too. You talk about untethering yourself to outcomes, right? Because when you're young, it's like, oh, I want to get this job or make this amount of money or train this level of client. And that all sounds great. And I think it's important to have, you know, like your outcome-based goals. But if you focus more on the process, like, hey, I'm just going to put in X amount of time coaching people every week. I'm going to spend Y amount of hours working on my continuing education. Doing those things ultimately helps get you to where you want to go. But I think that's just such great advice on your part. Look, man, and I saw, I see now in your newsletter, the process, right? The, the Joel yeah, MD, yeah. the Joel yeah, MD, right? Absolutely. And you know what's so funny? Just last night, I got an email. I, I used something called vidIQ which is like mm -hmm. an AI thing template for YouTube. And it, it, it yep. told me, it gave me a little badge and it said, congrats on your 1000th upload to YouTube. And I have had, like, bro, like since 2017, because I, I, I've had such, so many different iterations of YouTube, uh, you know, because you, you change things, you different brands. And then I went to Men's Health and I, and I built up their YouTube, uh, right. their overall social media. But then I left, I had to start mine over again. And it has been a grind. I just, I, it's been it's been the slowest uh, process for me to grow that channel. And I've tried almost everything at this point. 
So if I focus on the outcome, I could I could see it as a failure because I haven't Absolutely. achieved like I, I my goal was I gotta get at least to a hundred thousand subscribers, get that plaque, um yeah. you know, feel good about myself. I, I've been stuck like I I I maybe have only grown it about uh three to five thousand subscribers in the last three years and, and sometimes I've been posting multiple times a day. I just can't figure out how to break through. But yeah. in terms of the process, I'm I'm right on track. Because not yeah. many people, what what is it for podcasts? People don't get past the twenty episode mark. I can't yeah. seem to figure out how to get my podcast to get where I want it to go. But I just did two hundred and fifty episodes. Okay, they're gonna get better. I guarantee. Like I, said, I just they're gonna get better. <laughs> they're gonna get better, right? And ultimately, if you keep showing up, eventually you will be the last person in the room. That's how I've approached yeah. my entire career. I'm just gonna outlast you like a like a super bug. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that, that is what it's about. And, and we're talking business right now, but what about the gym? What is essentially what you need to do each day in the gym? People think what's the best program, exercise, training tool. No, no. You got to put in at least 10 to 20 minutes a day. If you yeah. can do a, up to an hour, that's great. So for me, it's just as long as I put in the time and there's lots of ways I do it now because I, I'm a savant. I'm, a, I'm an absolute savant in this space like you are, because we've done it for so long. We tried everything. Right. Um, and so now I don't worry as much about any outcomes. I just know as long as I can be consistent in those habits, that process, um, the ebbs and flows are going to come, you know, and, and that's, that's the reality of it, both my motivation to do it and also the consumers right now, bro. Like it, it goes both ways. People, uh, the vibes are, are, are <laughs> they're down. Like stuff <laughs> right. that I used to share that would crush People just don't care. Um, yeah. And then that makes me not want to care to make another thing, right? And, and so it's this right. vicious cycle of like negativity, cynicism, hopelessness, low energy. Um, and we've got to flip the script. And so it's going to take guys like you and I, people listening that are leaders of men and women to lift people up and, and also get through this stage right now where like the hardest part is getting the ball rolling and getting that momentum yeah. going in place. And uh, a lot of us are starting over, whether it be our, our new way of, uh, you know, people have left their, their jobs. People just, people just quit. They've got, yeah. <laughs> they've got yeah, no backup yeah. plan. They're just living on credit right now. Um, so a lot of people are struggling and we've got we've to gotta take away the complexity of this space yeah. and just simplify in terms of what it is that, what is it that fit people do every day? And, and it's simple stuff. It's not... Uh, German volume training. Those <laughs> certainly it can be a part of, of your your process and your journey. Um, so th that's sort of the biggest thing right now is um, how can we motivate an unmotivated mass? And mm. especially as us being unmotivated in the fact that it's a it's a, it's busier and more competitive than ever, and it's yeah. never been more difficult to actually, in my opinion, um, you know do do big things in this space without, you know, a mentor, uh, a plan, because it's so easy. Like in six months, people are gone. You know, yeah. uh, half the people left this space during the pandemic. The fact that I personally, to me, like when I made it through that, that pandemic, cause I, I thought like the home fitness, like this was going to be like the game changer for my business. I went through the worst business period of my life since the beginning of my career. So it, wow. it was, dude, it was a test mentally. Yeah, like, sure. Uh, but, you know, you get on their side of it and say, okay, I now know I can handle this storm, these types of storms. And what was it that got me through it? And it was it was my process. It yeah. was my unique gifts. Um, it's the same reason you're still here. So um, we we got we to gotta turn it up. <laughs> I like it. So talk to me about that because, you know, in 2020, everybody and their mother is in their house working out, buying gym equipment. You couldn't buy gym equipment. Did you try? Did you try and buy any gym equipment during the pandemic? I already had it. Okay. So, you know, like Peloton, crushing. Like you couldn't buy stuff from Rogue, all those major suppliers, it was gone. No inventory. So during that time, you're probably thinking, this is crushing. Was that what made you like go all in on in-home workouts, body weight training and that sort of thing? Or did this start before that? So... This started way before because uh, I wrote a book for men's health back in 2014 called Your Body is Your Barbell. 
which I yes. tried to build as the definitive guide to bodyweight training. Uh, though I only had 30 days to do it, and they what? want they kind of. <laughs> You had 30 they, days to write a book? Yeah, they, they gave me 30 days, bro. And, and uh, Oh, my gosh. I know. And also, they, they they changed the scope on me halfway through the project. I was trying to make, like, a Bible, an encyclopedia. Right, right. But they're like, you know what? We don't want to spend that much money on that many photos and pages. So, anyway, it was a great learning process. And, and, and it still holds up. It'll be almost 10 years coming up soon. But up until that point, look, man, I, I am an introverted person. I just am like, I don't really care for people. I love dogs. Uh, I like my <laughs> inner circle. I, I, yep. I, I'm one of those guys that just like, honestly, I am a caveman. Like, and, and if you put me in olden times, I'd have my cave. And then, you know, every quarter of the year or so, I'd visit with some people, then I go right back. Because I, 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 <laughs> right. like, I like the monk like lifestyle. I, I believe, you know, because then you see people and there's actually a lot to talk about. You know, that, you know, we can really share some stories and, but I'm not like a day to day person, whether and that's just right. not who I am as a coach. It's not who I am as a person. Um, it's just my wife and my dog. And then I've got like five to 10 people I stay in touch with. And then, you know, yeah. my, my, my professional peers, I try to stay in touch with, but you know, um, you know, ultimately I got sick of going to the gym. I didn't like the fact that my fitness was built upon having access to the gym and access to a lot of equipment. Um, and then that really is the concept of your body is your barbell. Um, you know, the, the 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 true skill, right? Like anyone can be uh, can create effective workouts when you have all the equipment, right? I'm talking sure. like Rocky Four. I'm not going to be like <laughs> Drago. I'm not going to be, you know. First of all, I've always been natural. Juicing up, no injections <laughs> um, or, or, or machines. I like to go into the, the natural, you know, whether would you call it calisthenics, gymnastics, whatever. But so as I do with anything, I immerse myself in the process. I get obsessed about it. It also is for someone like me, 6'2", 220, 225, you know, longer uh, arms and legs. This stuff was very tough for me. But sure. my barbell is big. So for someone like me, I don't need weights. Like, I, I, I don't even touch weights. Uh, I, I, yeah. The only weights I uh, like I, is when I film dumbbell workouts for my members. But I, right. it's, it's all body weight stuff. And it's actually it's a lot of stuff in the pool right now. Um, now, I did all this strength training when I was young during those critical ages where, like, Sure. You know, if you do it, then you can keep it for a long time and all that stuff. Absolutely. But what I'm getting at is um, the reality is I, I found this at men's health equipment, like you make a body weight thing, equipment free, and even adding something like a dumbbell, which is accessible. Almost, almost anyone has a pair of Everyone. dumbbells in their garage or a gym, Sure. but 50% of people would drop off mm. just by adding a dumbbell into the equation. Right? So ultimately okay. you're trying to reach as many people as possible you need to eliminate as many excuses as possible. The, the flip side of that is because there isn't any equipment, you know, besides even a dip bar or a pull up bar or a TRX, uh, sometimes people devalue that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like yep, you, you actually can't charge as much for a body weight product as you can like, uh, you know, a, an equipment product because of that. So there's all these interesting things, but for me, I like to my, my training program is like a championship defense. It travels. Right. I'm not limited by any equipment or anything like that. And what it's forced me to do, Mike, uh, because I program for people all across the world, all walks of life. And uh, it, it's made me become so like right here where I am right now. This is my gym. It's my film studio. Um, I would argue that per square foot. I make more money here than anyone in the world. Probably. You know, um, <laughs> Probably. You know again, it's six by six. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And that, that's, that's one thing too I want to touch on. Um, the book did not do as well as I had hoped. I thought this was going to be like all these things you do, like my first DVD with Men's Health, my first book, I'm like, this is going to change my life. And it did in some ways, but I thought I was going to be set. Um, this, did, this didn't have the commercial success I wanted, but this became like a cult uh classic with, with prisoners and inmates. I, I got so many letters from people that were hmm. in jail that found this book. And because it was created to do these workouts in a phone booth, or I guess a jail cell, um, right. the fact that like it, they, they were able to like transform their bodies and allow themselves to rebuild their mind in that state. That's really cool. For their That's release. really cool. So again, I, I share that too, because you think it's going to be this, it most likely will be something else. 
but be okay with that. You know what I mean? It still yeah. hit people and I learned from it. And, um, you know, every, whether it be in the gym or in your career, every test is preparing you for the next test. So that's why you can't work. Like you get ready. I, I want to test my one rep max, uh, whether it be my first pull up or my bench press and it doesn't go well, but it's like, well, this is how, how can you get there without failing along the way? And, right. uh, and by the way, you, who are you to say what is the success with a project, right? And, and sure, that, that's sure. what it's, that's really what it's all about. It's, it's the Bruce Lee approach, be water, you know, be, be okay, be flexible with, with how things come out and understand too, it never stops. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I kind of have this vision for today's show when I was bringing all of our thoughts together. There's like the training side and then the recovery side because fitness over 40, we would love to just talk training, training, training. But I think if you've been over 40, and this is always one of my pet peeves, I'm not going to rant too long on this, but the person that's like 40 years in one day and then writes like the definitive guide to being over 40, you know, <laughs> I got, I, that always bothered me, right? Versus, hey man, if you're like a half a decade or a decade over that age group, then you kind of know, right? But you know, as well as I do, you get over 35, over 40, recovery becomes a bigger component of that. So we'll focus on both sides, right? Fitness and recovery. But before we go there, you talked about something in our FaceTime or like email before the show, you talked about the EHOH approach, every hour on the hour. What on earth does that mean? All right. So, you know, this is really, and I, I kind of developed this during the pandemic because, you know, again, like I'm, I'm stuck at home. And for me, it was a unique opportunity. I just recognized, okay, I'm getting to this point. And it's funny, you mentioned the 40 thing, like an expert, I got in preparation for my 40th birthday, I created this top 40 fit over 40 exercises video for YouTube. I have a, a manual as well. I created for Amazon. So I actually announced myself as an expert before I even turned 40. But <laughs> the reality I is, it. Mike, I, I, as I've, and, and I, I, this is key. Those listening, you got to always be ahead. Yeah. When I, when I turned 35, I recognized, okay, some things are starting to change here. Not just my motivation, yep. but how I'm responding to training. And then also what my body really needs. I've mm -hmm. already at that point, I put my body through all the possible physical tests in a lifetime. I've had right. all the injuries. And what I didn't have was ultimately, I, did, I never had the discipline to rest. The, dis the loading discipline. And what that means is yeah. to be okay with staying light and keep right. milking it for everything it's worth. Cause I can go heavy anytime, bro. Like that, that's just what we do. We've done that. Yeah. Um, yep. And then recognizing ultimately your audience ages with you. Part of the reason I'm doing so much water work right now is because I'm trying to think about what things, how am I going to still do this when I'm in my fifties, my sixties, because my land days are numbered. Sure. But I'll be able to do things in the water until the day I die. And yep. st I'll still be able to do things on land, but now the proportion of that can change. So yeah, you know, that that's, and I was one of the first to market with a streaming workout platform. Uh, I had you on the platform. Um, yeah. Stream fit, baby. Stream fit, man. Yeah. And, and again, like I thought that was going to be my retirement and it ended up, uh, you know, it ended up quote unquote failing, but it also unlocked the men's health opportunity, which opened me up right. to millions of people and gave me the experience now where like, there's no one who has more experience in the streaming workout space than me. Um, yeah. and, and, and it's tough, it's tough sledding right now because everyone's doing it. Um, so, you know, th there's that piece to it as well. So, um, to get back to the original question was, cause I, that was a little the bit of EHOH. Oh yeah. So here, here we go. So what that means is every hour on the hour, I committed to doing at least a minute of mobility. And a lot okay. of that was directed to my adult, my, here it is right here. You see it? So that's my office. Yeah. And, and a big part of habits are what? You got to have whatever it is you need to use or do. It has to be within eyesight. Right. Okay. Every time I, I walked past that bar, I got on it. And okay. there were some days I had a real plan in place. And some days I just, I did what I was called to do. And a lot of it, man, was just self-assisted hanging uh, where you keep your feet on the floor. And yep. that allows you to do what? Unload, spend more yeah. time, explore. Uh, I could, you know, twisting, turning, moving to more flexion extension. Um, 
And, you know, ultimately as someone who was like really heavy into bench press in college, I could do almost a 400 pound bench press, but I couldn't do a single pull up. What an oh, wow. imbalance, right? So I had sure. not put enough time on the bar. And so that, that, that's when we talk about process just by, you know, every hour jumping on that quick. And sometimes I can only hold for 15 seconds. Sometimes they go for three minutes. You know how grip is. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, and that can be applied to any aspect of mobility. And I, I started doing that also with some strength training because what I, what I started finding at this age, what I can't handle at this age is stiffness and soreness because it's already going to happen every morning when I wake up. I can't right. be putting that through my body because then I don't want to film. I don't want to make workouts and I can't do my job effectively. So what I started oh, wow. to do is yeah. just a ton of less training, more practice. Everything submaximal. Everything is driven through breath, meaning if I can't breathe through it, the set yeah. terminates. So that I'm yeah. not, as I did in my youth, ah, everything's like, you know, it's like everything was adrenaline <laughs> uh, based, hero yeah. based. And now, yeah. like, what I really wanted to be, I just wanted to be like Bruce Lee. I want to be able to smile, relax, and show something explosive quick, uh, relaxed strength. Because I can always yeah. call on adrenaline any time uh, of the day if I want. Um, but if I'm relying on adrenaline to drive not only my workouts, but my business, right? Constantly chasing deadlines, constantly trying to like, uh, you know, make a viral video, right? It absolutely exhausts you. And that's what I realized yeah. too. I've been running on adrenaline, adrenaline for the first 35 years of my life and I can't do this anymore. And I don't know yeah. how to breathe in my I've got all these old injuries that I uh, worked around. I, I avoided things or I, you know, found, you know, you, you, this is what you do. You manage and you try to find what around. going because I wanted to still yeah. look a certain way. But ultimately, <laughs> my right ankle and hip don't flex enough. And at some point, right. no matter what I do, I reach the stage where I hit a wall. So it, it's saying to yourself, okay, my muscles actually might shrink a little bit. <laughs> you don't want to lose your gains, Mike. But right. I had to be oh, okay with that me. because I had to bring my body back into balance. I had to rehabilitate, truly rehabilitate it and go back to the basics in the ground zero so I can run the next race for the next 40 years. Um, yep. And that's also where a lot of our people are. You know, you, you hit this wall and it's like, okay, I'm not motivated to look good anymore. I'm married or I'm just, I don't really care. And, and everything hurts and I'm, I just don't have energy. So what what's a viable path forward? Well, you know what? Anyone can bring a pull-up bar to their office door. By the way, if you're a strength coach and you don't have a doorway pull-up bar in your office, because this is another thing I too identified in my, uh, my, my pandemic reflections. There's only three things that matter when it comes to the health of your body. Your heart, your diaphragm, and your spine. Everything else really is, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all gravy, right? But if you can't breathe... Right. If your heart isn't working properly or you have back spinal pain, there's no viable path forward for quality of life. There's none. Yeah. So that was the shift because everything up until that point, you know, you and I, we started reading T Nation, Bodybone.com, all the magazines. It was all about skeletal muscles, all, oh, all yeah. about the outside, how you look, how yeah. big the muscles were, how strong you were, all ego. But the reality is if you can't breathe, if you can't circulate blood, and you don't have a healthy spine, there's really nothing you can do because you'll be in pain and you'll, you'll be uh, like the workouts I used to do would exhaust me so much because I, I, I couldn't breathe. I literally would finish yeah. the workout so starved of oxygen. I couldn't do any work the rest of the day. Um, where now I, I never, I never have to push myself to metabolic exhaustion because I spent three to five years uh, like connecting with my diaphragm and building it from scratch. Um, right. People aren't willing to take that time to take a step. And it was not just a step back. It was all the steps back. Um, yeah. and, and that's what we have to teach people is that, uh, again, we, this, this, is, this is a pill fast fix society, right? Yeah. Um, men, uh, I, I talk to men because I'm a man, right? Right. At this age, like <laughs> when I thought I was going to turn 41, my concern was like, will I still be able to get it up? Yeah. And you know what's crazy, Mike? Someone messaged me, and this is where Michael PG-13 on you. Uh, <laughs> someone asked me what it's like to be 41. And I said, well, my dick has never been harder. <laughs> and you know what? Like, these are the victories in life. 
because I thought right. like when I was younger, actually that was a problem for me because I was so stressed. I was so wound tight because what does stress do? Stress kills your dick. Stress kills your midsection. Stress yeah. kills your quality of life. Stress brings out the worst in us, but also the best in us. And the problem is too, when you have a career, when you, when you have to perform in front of people, you end up giving the best of you to people that, you know, don't really care about you really. Like they're not, they don't care about right. you, what your wife does or your kids do, right. but then you come sure. home and what's left is the worst of you. Sure. That's unacceptable. And we'll talk sure. about, you know, social media and stuff like that too, because as a coach and with social media and the internet, we're now exposed to a number of people we never, we never should be exposed to. Like the human brain is not meant to get this much criticism or this much praise. Both are right. very dangerous. In fact, I think praise can be the most dangerous. We can talk about that too. But um, back to EHO, uh, that, that's how I kind of changed the approach. So basically what I mean is, if I do at least a minute, and sometimes I go up to two to five minutes, at the end of the, the workday, <clears throat> I would have at least 10 minutes banked of my daily movement or fitness. And then I could, I could still do some training if I wanted to, but if not, I at least had that in place. And, and yeah, that began like to really that. transform my body, man. Because again, I, you start to, to move because you feel good, not because you have to. And you're not sore or tired because you're always in movement. Like I, I don't have to warm up as much anymore because I'm constantly doing stuff throughout the day. Um, and now it's just a habit. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. That first off, that's huge is moving because you want to and because it feels good versus because you know you have to, right? Like that's a big shift and it may take some time to get there, but that should be a goal. Number two, you didn't say it quite like this, but this is the way I think about it. There's a difference between training and testing. When we're young, all we wanna do is test our strength, right? Like the first time you bench press, you max out because that's what dumb kids do. And then what do you do? Well, every week you want to know, did my bench press go up? So you keep testing, testing, testing. And then you realize at some point, like this isn't viable. This is not a path to success. So you start to realize, unfortunately, a lot of times it's too late, right? But you start to realize, hey, just testing all the time isn't working. Maybe I should actually train some. Punch the clock, get the reps in. And then when you go and test, it's easy. Right. Pavel and uh, Dan John did that book, Easy Strength, years ago. Yeah. And you read it and you're like, nobody got strong on this. Right. It's like two sets of five, two sets of four. But you're just putting in the work every day. And then all of a sudden, oh, you go to test two, three months later, you've accrued all this volume. Right. It's been easy. You've greased the groove. One of the techniques they used to talk about. But all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, I'm a lot stronger. You did the same thing. Just unlocking your body rewiring. I think of it like this. It's like giving yourself uh, a new operating system, right? You go from whatever Mac OS 10 to Mac OS 15. Immediately, your body's like, yo, this is how I should feel or how I could have felt if I would have done this stuff earlier. But it's hard to take that step back. 100%. Again, if you start thinking about your body, start thinking about your nervous system as all it is, is a camera. And mm -hmm. if you are taking perfect pictures in terms of how you look at your movements, and again, part of this too is because we film, I'm filming constantly. I'm, every, every, every video I see, I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm missing range of motion here. I don't like how my upper back looks here. Because again, I'm trying to create perfect pictures, not only for yeah. my nervous system, because that's what's going to be burned in there. But also the reality is when you're doing online training, and because I've done some online coaching and stuff where I see what people are actually doing, how they're interpreting the workouts I'm sharing. Yeah. If I'm not showing something perfect, because you know yeah. that there's going to be a 25 to 50 percent minimum misinterpretation of that. Right. Because sure. people aren't going to take the time to film themselves and they think they're doing a get up with their arms straight. I get it. I get a FaceTime video where I'm, I'm like, it's it's you think it's straight. You actually honestly, you think it's straight, but it's this is how it looks. Yeah, this is yeah. straight, right? <laughs> um, right. And, and a lot of it is too. Again, taking the uh, and I, and I challenge all trainers or coaches with this too, because we know in theory, right? All your body knows is time and tension. Uh, it doesn't really, as long as you give it the appropriate training stimulus, it, it can grow. You can improve stamina, strength, power, etc. But we're still caught in like, I need the barbell, or I need, you know, I need the the, the gym, or whatever else like that. Um, or I need the load. So what I, I challenge myself to, and it's, it's, it's been three years where I will not allow myself to go heavier than a 25 pound dumbbell. 
Uh, and uh, the reality is anytime I want, I can take a hundred pounder and press it, squat it, do a get up. But, th- but because right. I do such perfect practice for extended times through breath with a light 25 pound bell. And again, that's the, that's the whole Dan John Pavel stuff too. It's like, take, start at 25 to 50% of what you could do in a maximum effort, whether it be one rep or repetition yeah. or whatever, and then just do high frequency of it and then boil the frog. All right. And this, all the frog activists are going to get really upset about this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you, you boil, and that's how I approach all this stuff. I, I, I the program and I make a lot of the one year programs. I, I, it's almost like the wax on wax on method where like all of a sudden you're in month nine and 10 and you're like, Oh my God, I'm doing things I never thought possible because yeah. instead of throwing you in the hot water, I make it very comfortable for you. You're like in Bali, you go yep. in the water and it's like, I don't even feel like I'm in the water because it's the same temperature. Right. But you keep adding a degree, you keep adding a degree over time. And then again, a lot of that too, is just you're fresh and the biggest issue people have, right? When you're testing, what, what's the biggest issue with testing? Anxiety. What happens sure. when you get anxious? You can't breathe. Yeah. But now you can't go as hard or for long or uh, because you're not breathing properly. If we're talking, if we're talking repetition endurance, it means you're going to get metabolically wasted faster, right? If we're talking right. uh, one rep max strength, it means that the, your, your, your posture is going to be off in some way because of the sure. inability, to, inability to breathe or you can't properly use breath for stability on the eccentric phase or breath for force on the concentric phase. Um, and so that's what it's all about. We got to get away from, because all the things you see people's interpretations of fitness is someone screaming, yelling, uh, breaking things, you know, looking like they're about to die. Uh, shout out to CrossFit. Um, and by the way, that's, that's something else that changed the last time I saw you too. I don't know. I don't know if you have a lot of CrossFit people that follow. I kid CrossFit. I don't think so. Um, I, I didn't think so either, but, uh, back when I last talked to you, CrossFit was a thing and now rest, oh, yeah. now rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So something else that you've talked a lot about here lately, and I think this is brilliant and something that needs to be talked about, especially as we age, we lose that resiliency in our connective tissues, right? Our fascia, our tendons, you're talking about plyos, slant board training, using all these tools in your workouts, which I think is brilliant because I think one of the things we have to preserve isn't just our strength. It's not just our muscle mass, but we need to preserve this ability to utilize the stretch shortening cycle, right? It's free energy. It's easy energy. So talk to me about how you're incorporating this stuff into your workouts, because I think this is a critical piece of the puzzle as we age. So, you know, shout out to this company, Squat Wedgies. Um, Squat Wedgies. Because I'm I'll connect you with the the guy, by the way, because this is like, this is part of why, uh, like, it's unlocked so many things for me. Because, again, we look at what variables can be trained in a program typically, right? Uh, your exercise yep. selection, uh, the work to rest or sets and reps, uh, the exercise order, the range of motion, the tempo, all this stuff. But we haven't had the ability to really effectively, especially for people at home, train angle. Training right. angle changes everything. And the simple example of that is uphill. Or downhill, right? Yep. We're changing the way that our body's interacting with gravity, um, and, and this is. I also started seeing this. You know, it became this this thing that's been around since the '90s, right? There's a couple of things recently, right. right? The sled. People think that someone recently invented the sled <laughs> or the slant board. You know, this has been in on football fields or in physical therapy settings since the '80s and '90s, all right? But right. they this is typically seen as something that can just help you squat deeper, and and it can do that. But the reality sure. is uh, the right inclination. I, I think a lot of things, this is about 20 degrees. I think when you go any higher than that, it's probably not beneficial. But at about right. 20, I actually found, because you know this is supposed to help you if you have bad ankle mobility. But the reality is at this angle, it actually helps you push the knee forward. And yep. it drives ankle mobility so that, you know, and he even has an option that actually like you can stack it, go from 20 degrees to 13 to 7 so now we have a way to oh, that's cool. systematically regress, progress inclination or change it based right. on the goal. Um, and then, by the way, it's not just about the ankle. It's about the wrist, right? So if I elevate the fingers yeah. on a push-up, now I'm doing active, aggressive wrist mobility work. 
But certainly I can elevate the heel of the hands for a beginner who doesn't have the wrist mobility. So maybe we do some sets, heel of hand elevated. Oh, cool. And between sets, we mobilize the wrists. Um, yeah, beyond the fact that this like also that. changes the stimulus. This is going to actually push you forward more. It takes you from this position to more here, right? So now it's like a, almost like a pseudo planche, planche, planche. Yeah. I don't, what, what is it? Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Yeah. Planche. Your, your guess is as good yeah, as mine. Yeah. <laughs> but now, now this is more of an anterior shoulder stress, which can be good if that's the goal. You want to make your push up more shoulder focused. So yeah. training angle to me is like one of the, I don't know if it's the final frontier in terms of variables we can, you can look at, but I also look at it from the standpoint of like, here's, here's an example, simple things that can transform someone's life or fitness, right? So I have this, uh, and, and by the way, they have like trainers or coaches, like if I still had a gym, I would get six of these so I could create a station if it was a boot camp workout. Um, th this not only allows you to take someone and immediately put them in, in positions of success or scalability, um, you can also, you're gonna unlock things that are, are just truly transformative, right? So what happens over 35? We just wake up stiff, we wake up tight. Uh, our tissues get very dehydrated. And what are we primed for? One example I'll give, I was playing pickup basketball 10 years ago, and I saw this very fit guy. This guy was a star athlete in high school, uh, still looked great, physically fit, and he stepped to receive a bounce pass. His, uh, his uh, Achilles just ruptured. Yeah. Again, it's like just a matter of time after 35, and a lot of things, like especially if you were an athlete and you're just coming out of work and you're wearing a suit and tie and you're jumping into pickup basketball, but just stand with your toes elevated in a slant board. You, can, you yeah. can do this while you're taking a phone call. You can do it while checking your email. You can do it while watching TV. You, you know, these are, these are simple things. You can take it to your, your, your work, your office. And just by having those tissues stretch for prolonged periods of time, and I think that's the biggest mistake I see in most people's programs, their sets. Their sets and the sets they program are too short. People mm. need time to get into positions yeah. and, and relax into positions because of how tight we are, because of how sedentary we are, because of all the commuting, the sitting. So, you know, that's a transformative thing you can do. And you, my, my, my challenge is just like you can say with the hang, try to accumulate. And I think with anything, right, you want to try to accumulate about five to 10 total minutes a day. If you're trying to transform a position or uh, your performance with something specific, so that could be the hang, that could be the squat, that could be just standing on a slant board for someone with really tight calves that walks like they're Frankenstein. You can hear them walking two blocks away because they have no yeah. ability to bend. Um, now, here's what's so transformative about this, getting to the, the concept of plyometric mobility. Why is it that people have like such a proliferation of you know jumpers knee or runners knee or just, you know, I know you do a lot of stuff with the knee and ankle because of the basketball population you work with, even soccer, right? Yep. Um, the reality is we go from static stretching and then very light dynamic stretching to explosive movements. So the concept of what I would call plyometric mobility. So two ways. One thing, people, what about bouncing? You know, like you want the people to go from standing to jumping or squatting to jumping. Well, that's a big jump. But bouncing yeah. is something that just eases. And again, what we need to get ready for that stuff. I almost look at like the, we all, we all know this in all things, extensive before intensive volume. Before, I was literally writing that down. Right? Volume before yeah, load. It's extensiveness. Yeah. So with, with a, something like, and again, I, I can do this elevating my toes. So when I bounce, imagine this is my foot and I'm just, I'm just bouncing. I'm letting my knees, ankles and hips just kind of bend a little bit. I'm doing maybe 50 to a hundred reps, starting really light and easy, but I'm getting, you know, all these low impact pulsing plyometric reps and at about rep 25 and 50, now things start to bend a bit. And by the way, this is also yeah. a movement screen. If this bothers your anterior knee, just doing light, easy bouncing, toes elevated, to, and, and toes elevated, now we're, stretch, we're stressing the ankle. Heel elevated, we're stressing the knee. Both are good because they're telling you, okay, this, if this hurts, wow. I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to do anything heavy duty plyometric, right? Right. Um, and this right. is prepping you for. It's giving you the volume and the time under tension required. Uh, and, and we know this too. Kelly Stratt used to talk about this all the time. It's the credit card analogy, right? You want to repeatedly, quickly bend it back and forth. That's what snaps it. You can't just 
rip it in half unless right. you're a, uh, you know, a superhuman freak, freak show. Um, <laughs> so, you know, bouncing is an example of that. Um, another example of it is marching. When I'm marching on something like this, it's not just that I'm stretching the ankle just by being on it, but when I lift the lift one knee, the opposing trail leg is in a massive stretch, and also it's receiving a ballistic stimulus mm -hmm. at the bottom. So I can start slow marching, then I can do power marching. You can even skip on these. See this big unit? This big unit is designed for more heavy duty or, uh, or faster movements because it's wider, it's got rubber grips in the bottom so it doesn't slide. And so you're basically doing, uh, it's almost like you're doing skips uphill. So, because yeah. what's the big, one of the biggest issues is, is the trail leg when you're walking and running, right? That, that it's, if it can't stretch, uh, you can pull a calf, you can tear your Achilles or hurt your Achilles. Um, but in the same focus too, because going uphill, what? There's more of an accelerated stress. Downhill, like when I do hiking, I love, like my favorite part is going uphill. That, that's people's least favorite part. People love to come down. But for me, my history of knee pain, um, I hate going downhill because the decelerated stress, I, I tore my, I, I had four knee surgeries by the time I was 22. Um, and they told me this is like, this is the arthritis of an 80 year old at 22, man. Oh like, gosh. I'm like, I'm yeah. just starting my career. How am I going to do this? And I couldn't even do a body weight lunge. Uh, but I could deadlift 500 pounds. So that, that's the imbalances that I was dealing with at the time. But when right. I do uh, bouncing or skipping, or you can even run on this, and it's almost like training your body to go downhill and receive the decelerated stress. Now, you could say, well, just go to the hill. Well, what about people during the winter? What if you live in Indiana, PJ? That's what I'm saying, right? Have you ever lived in Indiana? There's no hills here. There's no, they're right. It's, it might be the flattest state in the union. There you go. It is flat. There's no hills here, man. It's flat and uh, it's not something you can do at home or travel with or bring to your gym. Um, and, and again, because I love, I, the, the hill The hill is like, it's the ultimate metaphor for life, going up and down a hill. It's a big yeah. part of most athletic training situations, but this gives you the ability to start preparing for that environment. And just so, I'll start with just some like, and by the way, I'll, I'll even do some like, uh, for a long time, this has been done. skater jumps, right? You can position this to, to stress yes. whatever you want on the skater jump in a lot of different ways and just changing the, just do just basic single leg balance on this, right? When I, when I just yeah. balance on one leg like this, major stretch of the cap, but also now it's pushing the weight to the heel. When I go heel elevated, single leg balance, now it's pushing it towards the toe. It's very hard to balance on your on one toe on one leg on the ground, but this gives you a intermediate stability buffer to get there. Mm. All right, and it's also getting yeah. you, uh, you know, it, it's teaching you how to just change uh, your position because it really walk, run, gait. It all starts with the foot. We know this, but we don't train the foot this way on different angles, right? I can also bias supination or pronation if I put the foot like this. Yeah. Or, and I flip yep. it the other way. So it teaches you how to, because pronation and supination isn't necessarily bad. We should be able to get in and out of those positions. That's the stability that people are missing, whether because they wear overstructured shoes. Uh, and by the way, if you look at the great athletes out there, they don't, their foot doesn't touch the, doesn't touch the ground or just like fall to the ground like most people's feet do. Their foot impacts the ground. They're, 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 they're yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like they, they're, Impact sounds like a bad thing, but it's not. They're controlling how the foot is, is interacting with the ground versus the, the ground determining how your foot's going to interact with it. It's a totally different thing. Not to go like yep. Jedi level here, but um, <laughs> or, or here's another example, submaximal jumps. So if I elevate my toes on this, and again, I'm talking like 25, 50%, just trying to leave the, the, the board a little bit, come back down and land soft and have no pain, yep. but also just, again, you're never going to experience this level of stretch on your ankle when you're jumping on flat surface. So it's also building a natural buffer or gray zone uh, in terms of resilience or injury prevention. And if I do yep. jumps landing heel elevated, it's prepping my knees for what's ultimately going to happen in sport, right? You're not going to land perfectly. You're probably going to land sometimes on your toes. And if you're not slowly yep. building up to that, you're going to really hurt your knee, if not from overuse, from a, you know, a, a chronic overuse situation, uh, tendonitis, whatever it might be, or there might be something acute 
terrible thing, catastrophic injury. Um, so this also allows a court athletes, volleyball, basketball. I know you talked about this all the time over the years, the importance of keeping your trunk upright. And uh, that's really tough for a lot of people, uh, especially if you have bad, uh, you know, ankle mobility. So by doing some jump or low level plyometric training, heel elevated on a slam board, you can start training your body how to get more upright and start bridging that gap. So, yep. um, and I'll even do like, you know, the, the something called the icky shuffle or like a, a lateral three foot drill where I am going, moving side to side on this, but then I, I, I'm receiving and landing, but I'm also taking the time to just feel the position and be like, okay, am I too much on my toes or my heels? And I'll even kind of yep. bounce before I go to the next rep. And again, a lot of this happens when you can say, I'm going to set the clock for one, two plus minutes and just slowly ramp up over time. So we need to, we need, especially early on in the workout um, or just overall, we need longer sets. I think longer sets, the biggest changes I've made with my body have been through long duration sets uh, that can ramp up or just allow me to have enough time to to really create some change. Um, so, yep. and again, especially as you get people older, they get slower, right? They, they're stiffer. Yeah. So it just takes you so much time to get into a set. It might take people a minute to get ready to actually start a set, you know? So, yeah. but th this has been transformative because again, I've been trying to uh, rebuild my gait, uh, really teach myself how to jump and land properly. And, uh, and again, this has the ability to basically treat uphill, downhill conditions. Um, cause I, I see people out there just using it to, to squat and that, that, that's great, but we're just starting to really understand what's possible with these slam boards. Yeah. You can definitely unlock some movement. So you talked about pushups and I think it's a great little segue because I know you're obsessed with pushups. I think you always have been. As long as I've known you, you've been obsessed with push-ups, and you've recently created this push-up program. I think you said it's like five levels, 66 variations. So without walking us through every single step of this progression, how are you helping people get from, hey, I'm doing an incline push-up to, man, I'm doing full push-ups on the ground, or maybe even something really athletic and, and like really strong and tough like a single arm push-up? You know, so... I've always looked at things this way too. Like, again, I, I got close to benching about 400 pounds, um, but I definitely couldn't do a single arm push up at the time. You know, and to me, uh, if you think about it just from a, again, I'm not saying that these are exact numbers, right? But if you're 200 pounds and you're doing a single arm push up, you know, you could say that's the equivalent of a 100 pound dumbbell press. Sure. Without, yeah. w with the additional, Core, a spinal and shoulder stability demands that aren't required of a press. Um, so it is harder. And that's why people have yeah. traditionally looked at bodyweight exercise like inferior because you can't adjust it, the weight up or down in, in a micro fashion. So I, I ha I've right. had an obsession with micro progression uh, with the variations I create and, and the levels I create too. So this, I created this book called The Ultimate Push Up Guide. Okay. I'm like, who yeah. makes books anymore? But you know what's interesting, Mike? <laughs> what's old is new. We know this. The pendulum yeah. always shifts back. So you go, you go to these stores now, and they, they like they sell you vinyl records for like two hundred bucks. You, you could buy them. Yeah, five or ten <laughs> for five funny, or ten dollars. Yeah. You could get them you know, ten, twenty years ago. Um, and the thing is, too, our audience is getting older. And I think what's happening to a lot of people our age who grew up and just like we love to hold magazines and look at exercises and take the. This is the men's health thing. Like they get the the, ma the magazine and take out the poster. You know, those, yeah. those people are, they st they're still alive. And you know what right. they're sick of? They're sick of looking at their phone. It's not real. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's still an ebook version of this, but what I wanted to do, and a lot of this is, is if you're a trainer, coach, content creator listening, consumption habits have changed dramatically. When we started, it was all about like five to 10 minute deep dive videos. You yep. know what I mean? And when I made that fit over 40 yeah. video, it's like, it's, it's, it's literally, it's 48 minutes of nonstop information and content. The best, a minute per movement, a done for you workout at the end. Like I do, I put a full wow. month into that video and it's got like, it's been a year and it's got like 10 or 11,000 views, which is like people, some people listening are like, well, I'd love to get to, for me. No, because I had a right. video once get no. 48 million views with men's health. And that might never happen yeah. again, but that's my perspective. So, um, for sure, we don't, people are no longer incentivized to make great stuff anymore. 
You know, like, uh, let's talk about music. Volume, Michael man. Jackson took five years between Thriller and Bad. Like, Really? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, no, he, he, like, because he was a perfectionist. You know, and yes, he wanted, he wanted that. to, like, that was the quintessential album. How do I top this? And, you know, for me, like, as bad was my first cassette tape. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Remember yeah. those? Um, oh, yeah. And uh, that, that no longer exists, right? Because now songs are like 90 seconds or less, and they make them, they make a new song every day. And we've just gotten comfortable with a high frequency or, or amount or quantity of mediocrity. Movies are not as right. good anymore. They don't put as much money behind the movies anymore. So from our standpoint now, so when I, like, when I was leaving Men's Health, we already started to see, like, we had, we've got to keep these videos about one or two minutes. And now seven years later, if you can't really make anything beyond 15 seconds right now. You can't. I, I see oh, in my yeah. YouTube yeah, analytics. If I go from 15 to 30 seconds with a video, half the people leave. How can we change hearts and minds in 15 seconds. Well, I'll try every day, <laughs> but right. what, what right. I'm trying to say is too, if I focus on the process, right? I could say that video was a failure. The reality is what I made was like, all 40 movements are timeless movements. Uh, the, the minute on each video, it comes with transcription. Uh, it, it gives you regressions, progressions, modifications for that, for that movement or variations. Um, so this will live forever. And we've got yeah. to look beyond uh, a viral video or performance. We got to make good stuff. And to make something good, it takes a lot of time. And oftentimes people will not appreciate it or recognize it for what it is. People don't know how to recognize talent. People don't have an eye for what is a good workout versus a bad workout. What they see is someone's look or their presentation style. This is just the reality sure. of it. So with that, what, I, what can I do in 15 seconds? Well, all I can do is really show one exercise properly, right? So that's, we, I've gone right. away from sharing workouts because if I share a workout in 15 seconds, it's got to be sped up to the point where you, you can't even like follow it. Tell what it is. And yeah. by the way, this is where I think we made a big mistake when it comes to programming or, or, or motivating people. Where do you start? Well, we want to start them on the, the, the full body. Uh, if it's phallus, we got to start them on the full body program, right? That might be too many movements for people. So why not take a single movement like the push-up that you can do anytime, anywhere that, yeah, it's going to be more of an upper body exercise. It's going to be more of a anterior chain exercise. Okay. It's not the only movement you should do, but when it comes to habits, any habits, what do you do? You start with one thing at a time. Let's master yeah. the push-up. Let's, let's put that into Love your it. movement database. Let's make it habitual. Let's get you excited about that. Then what's next? Then it's the pull-up. Then it's a single leg squat. So that's why I'm, I'm actually going out now. I'm going to go one movement at a time. I'm going to take you from ground zero to that. superhero. And in terms of your original question, sorry, you, dude, I got fired up for this podcast. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> and this is, this is only caffeine. I got a little bit of caffeine. That's you're about good. it. But um, you're good. The, where to start? What are the two biggest problems with the push up, right? You, wrist mobility. Okay. We just talked about with the slant board of how you can start to just do basic planks. Fingers yeah. elevated planks. If that hurts your wrist, you're not ready for push-ups. Unless you right. really regress the, to the point that the body angle is unloading you enough, right? But still, yep. your planking should always be one step ahead of your push-up. That means your isometric ability, injury-centric strength, always needs to be a step ahead of your concentric uh, range of motion, right? So you start yep. with that. And then you can you can start doing also push-ups, heel of hand elevated to work around. So we can work around the wrist mobility issue. We can also work through and gain wrist mobility, right? So push-ups, yep. heel of hand elevated, planks, fingers elevated. The next component yep. is, dude, I'm old school. I, I believe I got the original from Elite FTS, the, the Paul Kelso Shrug book. Oh, Remember yeah. that? Yeah, that's an OG oh, book for sure. That's like that's a genius book. And what, what, I, what I spend most of my time doing, so when I'm on that bar, it's just a lot of shrugs, man. Because again, I look at the shrug. The shrug is all about the shoulder girdle. If the shoulder girdle right. has the right mix of, of stability and mobility, adding strength and muscle on top of that base, it's, it's again, you build the biggest base if you want to build the, the yeah. tallest building. All right? And yeah. It's not sexy yeah. and it's hard to show. And sometimes like early on, if you're trying to do it, it's almost impossible because you want to bend at the elbow. 
and the motion is so small, like the naked eye can't even see it. But uh, if you can't protract and retract the shoulders properly to a full range of motion and, and almost look, and I'll have people, I've gotten to the point now where I can shrug or protract so much, it looks like I'm a hunchback. But, you need, but your body needs that ability to go there yeah. and come back. Uh, so the yeah. serratus anterior uh, and the ability to protract, retract the shoulder blades. So one, two, it, it's the, the, the wrist, the, the scapular slash serratus. And then the third component, if I can give you something quick. And again, this has five levels of progression. Um, and then with each level, there's either from nine to 14 variations you can start employing. And I gifted you guys, by the way, you can get to your list. Uh, over the course of starting from the pandemic to, to present date, I created something called the Boost Your Reps chart. And uh, what okay. that is, basically, I can show you. Here's the, here's the page. This is my obsession with this stuff, man, as I find it here. So, again, I'm obsessed with fitting things to one page because I also know <laughs> that if you, if, if you make a program and it has to go onto multiple pages and it's for a consumer, good luck. Because right. even if it might be a better program going to the second page, you, you haven't simplified it enough uh, for the end user, all right? So this yeah. chart, there, there's basically uh, one, two, three, there's six co uh, columns. And basically uh, zero reps is one, one to two reps is the second, and there's three to five, six to eight, 10 to 12, and then 15 plus. So what that means is whatever movement you want to do, and, and this is great for calisthenics, but you can apply this chart also to weight training. Um, so if you can't do any reps, this is a built-in 12-week program that I've used that works every single time to unlock your very first pistol squat, single arm push-up, or even pull-up. Again, within means, right? Because there's some people sure. that are five to 10 weeks away from a single arm push-up, and there's people that are five to 10 years away. So it has to be realistic, sure. right? Um, but in the same regard too, if you, if you currently can only get three to five reps of a movement, and use that same kind of sub-maximal start, high-frequency approach. And then over the course of 12 weeks, you end up doing, if you can do three to five reps one time, you end up being able to do five-plus reps of three to five reps. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so now you have the ability to maybe do yeah. 10 reps in a single set. Yep. Um, so I gifted it to you guys because, again, I, I've used this. I, I had one guy, uh, this brought, I went through one 12-week cycle. I got up to myself. 17 and a half pull-ups, which in my weight inside, it's a lot, man. Um, That's pretty damn good. I, one yeah. of my members hit 23 reps um, who started at 10 to 12. So um, it, it's just a great chart. So I, there, there's this built in. And by the way, this is something you do once a year. And you asked me to previously, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up the push-up piece too, but this is important. At this age and stage, I only push myself hard physically one quarter out of the year. The other three quarters are focused more on mobility, recovery, uh, technique, form, practice, and also prioritizing sure. my business because at this age, I, I can't train hard and give my business everything anymore all year round. But once a quarter, I can go playoff mode. And, and, yeah, and, and, and no, one like quarter that. at this age and stage of my experience, the amount of muscle memory I have, um, and just the fact that every rep I do now, it just... Every rep I do is so good and transformative. I don't need to do as many reps anymore, which is great. I don't need as many sets anymore. And one to two sets, I can get what used to take three to five plus. That's the benefit right. of age. But um, yep. the other piece of this too is being okay with high angle pushups. Like again, what, what you can do light and long repeatedly, there's no recovery required. And what I mean by this, and I'm, I got for those watching, I've got a pair of Libre equalizers here. When I elevate my hands here, all right, for me, I, and I can do single arm push-ups. So don't tell me that you can't still get benefits from this because most of the stuff I do is at a high angle. Why? Because I don't need to warm up. And I can do these sets throughout the day. And it actually, it's so easy for me. I can really explore the positions and I can really protract, retract. I can get down here and just spend time in the stretch position. Shift side to side, pulse. Take myself to really extreme joint angles that don't hurt because my body weight is so unloaded and I can do a set that can be two or three minutes. And what we get out of this, Mike, is such an epic 
pump and burn. We also eliminate in a lot of cases the stretch reflex. So we're, we're really taking pressure off the joint while fortifying the joint because the reality yeah. is we're really building the connective tissues and we're getting comfortable. I'm breathing through it. And one of my favorite tactics, this is like, this is old man tip right here. Because, you know, and by the way, this has still helped me bring up my maximum strength ability. Shockingly, what I'll do, and you can apply this to anything. It can be uh, you hold a push-up, a dip at the top, or uh, you, you hang. And you hang as long as you can or plank as long as you can. And then once you feel like you only got about five or ten seconds left, try to do one perfect single. Mm. You completely okay. exhausted your slow twitch fibers. The only fibers you can use are fast twitch. You can actually build maximum strength with light loads. I, I know that's, that's like conspiracy theory, but I've seen it in my own training and <laughs> other people's training too. Not that I don't do weighted huh. reps, but uh, what you do there is you, you, you're, you're like, it's almost like a way to just put, put the brakes on yourself too. Like, cause yep. again, I, I'm building, I'm, I'm still keeping it where it should be focused on form, range of motion, stamina, endurance as an older person. But my ability to do a perfect single after hanging on the bar for two minutes sometimes, uh, the way that can yeah. translate into my improvement and maximal strength um, is mind blowing beyond the fact the muscle building benefits are, are off the charts. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So uh, that, yeah. that's the biggest thing. You've got to be okay with regression doesn't mean you're going backwards. In fact, what I find is 80% of the time I spend in regression or um, easier, lighter, unlocks my maximum 20% performance. Hmm. I like that a lot. Okay, so this actually works as a transition because you talked about playoff mode, right? You also talked about, hey, nine months out of the year or three quarters, I'm focused on other things. And I know some of the things that you talk about are training waves versus recovery waves. So what is your mindset there? What are you thinking about when you're setting those up? So what I do, and I, I get people kind of on this general schedule, I like the classic, you know, three weeks on, one week off. In most cases, most months of the year. And then quarterly, I like I like two week breaks. I think when you do that, yeah. it's it just, again, especially as you get older, you don't want to just uh, find like the, the, the perfect balance. I think you want to stay ahead of the recovery curve, especially if you're prone yeah. like someone like me to overtraining, pushing too hard. Again, you not you got to know yourself. Some people, they might... Not need as much, but I think most people, right. honestly, that actually do this, they like to push. We come from a pushing culture, yeah. push, 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 never stop. Um, so that, that, that's what I call about this discipline to rest. I could maybe go another week, but I also know that not only are there diminishing returns, I, I am just going to, because you, you, make a, you make a plan, and just like Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And that's part of why I love yep. this, like this program. And I'd even say when you, when you, if you do that, like specialization chart, which again, you can give to them. If you can do 10 to 12, maybe pick the six to eight bracket. And the reason I say that is because we don't train in a, in a vacuum. You're, you're probably going to get sick or you're gonna, sure. there's going to be something that's going to come up at work or maybe your wife cheats on you and that's going to mess up your push up program. Right. right? Um, so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have to, uh, I, I kid. No, you guys are beautiful. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> but I'm just saying, things always do come up. And we also, we, we, we give it lip service. So like, well, what about your sleep? What about your diet? Well, you know it's not going to be perfect. So if you make a plan that requires perfection and not only implementation but recovery, you know that at some point you're going to run into a wall. So always underestimate your abilities when you take on a plan, especially as you get older. Because... As the water rises, like the first week or two, you're fine, right? All of a sudden, it's like week six right. and eight, and not, now you're not you're like you're starting to get anxiety before every set. Only the final couple weeks of a program should you start to feel like I don't know if I can necessarily do this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but if you start yeah, the, the first week with that, and I've been there, that was like the first ten years of my training life, where I'm like, okay, I'm just I'm just <laughs> yep. gonna call on my ancestral strength to get through this workout. And I'm wondering why I always get hurt or I hit a wall at the four to yep. six week mark. So um, when it comes to, and, and wave too, wave is something I know people have said it, but I don't know the concept of wave. If you actually watch a wave, the way it builds, you know? And so you accumulate on both sides, meaning 
Uh, a lot of people don't allow themselves, they'll rest for a couple days, but in reality, the first three or five days of a recovery period are just you eliminating so much of a stress bomb in your body, but you're not actually uh, entering a recovered state. You're just trying to get back to zero. You're not, you're not right. able to get all the way parasympathetic. So what I, what I believe yep. is, and I'm actually doing it right now too, because recovery as a creator, as a programmer, as a coach, you, this is just a reality, guys, gals listening. You're not a good coach when you're stressed out. You're certainly not the, the best sure. version of yourself. Sure. If you're trying to create, you can't create uh, under highly stressful conditions. Now, people can say, well, pressure makes diamonds. It does. But the reality is, what is going to, what the cost of that ongoing is too much, especially for an older person. So, when I'm trying to do something big professionally, it's a big project, or I've got a big product coming out in the next month. So, I'm purposefully and strategically taking my train volume intensity down. And I'm trying to go hyper parasympathetic because when I do that, my mind, is, I'm like, I'm like the beautiful mind. But when I'm really yeah. stressed out and I'm training really hard, uh, I end up creating out of, uh, there, there's no love and joy in the programming. You know what sure. I'm saying? People, like, they, well, they, this is, it's the lizard brain taking over. Exactly. Right. The lizard brain is you're, taking over. You're in over. a survival right. mode. And again, I've made some of my best stuff yeah. in terms of what the consumer thinks under those highly stressful conditions. I do believe that stress, uh, like pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone is very important and breaking through in certain, certain things. But we're talking about doing this for five, 10, 20 years. You get to a certain age, this age, I, I can't be doing that to myself and, and, and then, and just expect myself to still be a good husband and to still be what I want to be in other aspects of my life. Cause I'm giving away too much. And I'm also just, I, I'm burning myself out. And burnout right now is hitting people in a way. And, and the thing about burnout, bro, like sometimes you can't get out of it. I got so yeah. burnt out in high school yeah. doing six hours of homework a night. I got, I got, cause I'm a perfectionist. I would go home. I would rewrite my notes cause I, I didn't think they looked good enough. And then I would type them up. Mm. That's before I even got to my own work and that burnout, right. I still haven't fully recovered from. And that's probably a good thing because I'll never work that hard again. And, and it was unnecessary. But what I'm getting at there right. is um, you have to understand as a creator, if you're making something, when you make something out of love, joy, passion, if you're, if, you're, if, if you're smiling when you make it, there's a TLC that goes into that. Maybe the consumer can't see it, but certainly your peers will recognize that. And for your standpoint, yes. you're really putting your best stuff out there. Um, so that's an understanding. Now, also, this is the New Year Fitness thing coming up, too. So I've got I've, I've to be mindful. I can't give all myself to all these things. So I'm going to prioritize my business, my creation mode here. I'm going to put my fitness on kind of autopilot. Nothing wrong with maintenance. Yeah. And by the way, like, no. I, I'm also using this as an opportunity to really explore because I have a pool that is uh, not heated. And I live in Palm Springs, the, the desert area, but it gets cold in the desert in the fall and winter. This pool yeah. is like low 50s right now. So Ooh. I'm doing a lot of training and we'll talk, we can talk about this next too, where I'm doing, whether it be sauna or hot tub, uh, doing some breathing mobility drills, ground based, and to doing uh, training with uh, either water bells or ankle fins in the cold pool and contrasting. Yeah. So again, I'm using this opportunity to do something new, challenge my, myself in a unique way, but also the recovery in the pool is like, like if anything, it actually it, it gives me more creativity. Um, there, there's not much of a cost to my joints. So that's what I mean by also wave two. The you got to. When's the last time you you had like two plus weeks of recovery? People don't give themselves that, and they never let their bodies right. heal. And uh, the reality is, too, man, like it is all about mobility and range of motion. It is because we're, we're a system of levers. If the levers are not in optimal positions, at some point. Uh, you'll you'll hit a wall and or you can't possibly ma uh, maximally express strength, power, speed because um, again the, the building's messed up. Yeah, the foundation isn't there. Well, let's go ahead and talk about hydrotherapy just as a whole because one, I'm fascinated by it. Two, I know it's something that you use both from like a recovery perspective, but also from a training perspective. And look, I'm just I'm reminded of this one gal that trained at our gym. This was probably six, seven years ago now. And let's just be honest, 
gravity was winning, right? Like gravity was winning. It was a struggle to write programs for. And she did not want to hear when we recommended like, hey, like aqua aerobics, you know, pool based workouts. I think this is a really good option for you. But I would love to hear how you're inco- incorporating it and some of the things that you're doing to just take care of your body and feel great. So this goes back to the whole thing too, right? Like as you get older, it's really about cheat codes. So I moved to the desert mm. because like during the summer here, man, it's 120 degrees. I'm the only Ooh. person that walks during this. <laughs> like, it's literally, literally like a scene out of The Walking Dead during the summer here. People actually leave. They leave. But for me... yeah. And it might be because, like, my dad is from North Africa, so I've got, like, inherent desert Arabian spirit in me. Um, but when right. I do, when I just do an easy walk in 120-degree heat, that has the metabolic equivalent of a high-intensity interval training workout without the impact forces or the recovery needs. Now, I don't mean to diminish. Like, heat stress is real. The first summer I was here, I overdid it, and I had some serious heat <laughs> stress. So, again, like, like all things in my life, I always overdo it at first. I make the mistakes. I find balance. Right. And what we try to do as coaches, we try to help you, you know, again, ultimately I know you have to make your own mistakes if you're hard headed or stubborn, because you know, right. these are things that allow you to get real far in life, stubbornness, pride, but mm-hmm. they also, they cost and you usually won't listen. Yes. You know, like I'm one of those guys I got to figure it out myself. I doubt, I've always done it. But so, uh, I mentioned that because, um, you know, people devalue walking. And we, we, and this, this whole industry has like, we, I remember like even t- 10, 15 years ago, I would laugh when someone say, would say, uh, you know, walking is key for health or losing weight. Um, because I'm like, it's all about Metcon, but no, it's not. No one, right. pe- no one wants to do Metcon, bro. Like o- only, only, only <laughs> freak shows do. Cause it's, it's awful. It sucks and yeah. it works, but, um, everything has to be on point. And it's also not a sustainable habit for most people, but a daily walk. Maybe the most sustainable thing we can do as people, and, and I'll talk about how we can look at the walk as well. People look at the walk. They don't understand there's, there is regression, there's progression, there's breathing, there's variation. But the pool itself, for me, so I'm awful in the pool, man. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I literally, so I, I, I've tried, I spent the first 40 years trying to master land, and now I'm going to spend the next 40 years trying to master the water. Um, so it gives me some excitement. Like I, I, it's new to me. Um, like I couldn't even tread. And my wife and I are like on the opposite scales. Like she's, she's like this, uh, beautiful, curvy, uh, Puerto Rican. So, uh, she, she's so buoyant, <laughs> but she can't yeah. get to the bottom of the pool. Yeah, I am not. And for me, like I yeah. just sink cause I'm, I'm just, I'm dense. I have a lot of muscle. Like a rock. Yeah. So I have so many unique opportunities to make gains in the water. People look at the water like it's for senior citizens. And it is, mm-hmm. but again, this goes back to not vilifying regression or like low impact exercise, right? Why would you want to make it high impact? Right. Like, I'm cool with five to 10 high impact reps in a workout, but yep. if I can do tough jumps in the water and take away 90% of the landing forces and give my hip flexors fluid resistance to actually work against that isn't going to happen on land. So what I'm telling you is better training effect, much lower cost. If you would go to a financial advisor and had this conversation, this would be like, this is a home run, but you're looking at as something that Barbara, Barbara Bush used to do, who was 85, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And again, not only the fact that now, now what is, what's the issue with the water? And I dealt this all the way through my career. You level up, you get like a new training tool and like, you can't wait to share it, but nobody else has it. Right. And they're like, you know, screw you. You know, you're just this rich fit guy <laughs> who's always had everything advantage <laughs> to him in life. Look, man, I come from nothing. I worked my whole life to get a pool, but I don't take it for granted. Every day I use it. Uh, nobody's yeah. using their pool right now because it's too cold. But no, I see a unique opportunity to go in there because um, training in the heat Obviously, the the range of motion, mobility, like there, there's no warm up required, and the wave side of it too. Like when I when I stretch in the hot tub or sauna, um, what would take me an, an hour on land, I can accomplish in five to ten minutes in that either aqueous, indoor, heated environment, whether it be shin box work um, or or, what, or kneeling, being able to kneel pain free. Well, that's tough yeah. on land, but in a hot tub, it's accessible. 
And, uh, you know, right. th this is what people need. People are addicted to pain pills. Everyone is taking pills, bro, whether it be for pain, uh, for their, for, you know, I, I could go on and on. But the water, um, and there's a good book on this by like an OG called uh, Berdanko. Um, okay. You can get it on Amazon. He just like, he, he used basically all these unique strategies for people that are rehabilitating from paralysis or really brutal spinal injuries. But when you think about the water, we all started, and I, and I, I sometimes I hate this stuff too. Like, this used to be like, oh, look at how a baby squats. And I know people, okay. But, but we also like, we can't forget how things started. You start in water. And when we come out of right. the uterus, as long as the baby's healthy and nothing bad happened, everything is pretty much aligned. Everything is set. Um, because in a float, an aqueous float, floating environment, we can relax. We can breathe. We actually give when you're in, just by doing breathing work in the hot tub, not only are you warming up your core breathing muscles, your diaphragm, you actually have resistance to work out against the expansion of it. This is resisted sure. breathing in the huh. water. Um, and for me, as someone yeah. who was so tight and so wound up and was so chest, neck, uh, you know, secondary breathing versus primary, um, finally allowing myself to just know what it feels like to float, that allowed me to relax all those other muscles so I can zero in on the diaphragm. And I will say this too, weed helped me a lot. And I, I didn't hmm. take any drugs until I was, besides caffeine, okay, um, right. until I was 36, right. when I moved to California. But I had some unique mental and physical barriers I broke through with, with, with marijuana. And I don't, we don't, I don't want to spend time on it if you don't, it doesn't resonate with the audience, but I will tell you, um, it allowed me to relax enough and also to my, the mind muscle connections I started to get on some stuff where I could, I could literally feel you close your eyes, you get floating and I relax and I could feel my diaphragm expanding and contracting like a balloon. And you know this too, bodybuilders right. have said this for years. If you're not feeling the muscle work, absolutely, great things probably aren't going to happen. Um, so yeah whether it be just to stretch the ability to combine hot and cold, which elevate metabolism can keep you lean without doing a whole lot of stuff. Like again, we've got to get right. people doing easy stuff that makes them feel good. That impacts the things we just talked about earlier, heart, diaphragm, spine. One of the things I invested in too, because the reality is at about 35 for almost everyone, it might be earlier for people that, uh, put a lot of stress in their bodies through sport, powerlifting, whatever, uh, extreme stamina, endurance events. Um, you, start, you just, gravity closes the distance between your, your intervertebral discs. It just happens. Gravity yeah. wins. We gravity all know this. Wins. So yeah. I do at least yeah. 10 minutes a day on an inversion table, which is anti gravity. Like if I'm, if I'm going to, yep. again, the, the hangs can do that too, but I will say nothing. Uh, is as effective on the, because again, hanging from your hands is very different from the hanging from your feet because now we're, we're, we're changing more things at the pelvic level, lumbar spine attaches to the pelvis. That's where I would literally, I'd come off this thing and I would, I would feel space I had between the discs I hadn't experienced before. And again, I got this for like uh, 200 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I'll send it to you. Yep. Um, and uh, it's got yeah. like a vibrating heating pad on the back of it too. So you're literally vibrating and heating your spine while anti-gravity yeah. decompression. And, and I would also sometimes do it after a walk quick because as great as walking is because of some pelvic uh, asymmetries, tilting, turning I had or just general mobility issues or injury history. I, I was, I was finding myself the tightest I've ever been after a walk, but this would basically realign my mm. system. Um, and not to mention inversion is great for, flooding blood to the brain, creativity, uh, circulation, uh, dealing with edema in the lower body. Um, again, these are cheat codes, uh, but you look at them as yeah. something for old people. Well, look, we're all going to be old. And that's why I've always thought to stay ahead. I, at 35, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be 40 in five years. Instead of waiting until I'm 40 to change the way I do things, I'm going to change it at 35. I like that. If you're 25. Yep. I like that. You know, again, these are the things you're 25. Like I can do any, I can do it all right now. I can do, um, whether it be like, I'm going to do all the training. I'm going to do all the, uh, DMS and social media. I'm going to do all this work. Well, the reality is even around 30, your overall energy 
Like, I look at the human body like a battery. Or, or, or an iPhone, right? Like, it just, when you charge it, yeah. it only goes to like 90% now. And it depletes yeah. much faster. Yeah. That's, That's all it analogy. is, right? Yeah. So it, it doesn't mean that I'm less of a person. It just means, okay, I just I have to know this. That um, And even if I can get it all the way full, it's not going to last at 100% as long as it used to. That's okay, yeah. Yeah. right? I, we have yeah. to accept. It's an acceptance journey. Aging, right? Yeah. And anti-aging to me is not taking pills, though I do like Daily Athletic Greens, which is a powder. But people sure. want pills, powders, and sure. potions. Anti-aging is just it, – it's accepting and embracing cheat codes where you can find them. And when I get in the water, right, one of the most uh, – like – I got in there initially and I'm like, everything's clicking and cracking. What's happening? Like you start to do some like motions like this, anything overhead in particular or straight on. Like my shoulder sounded like it was a, a, a symphony and not a good way. The number of sounds. My <laughs> hip was the same way. Right. What does that mean? That is the early stages of arthritis. Absolutely. Because all the open chain movements we do on land, they have a strength curve. You do a bicep curl and it's hardest up until this point, and then it's easy here. When you do a bicep curl right. in the water, it's continuous fluid resistance. When I'm doing various shoulder movements, all angles, ranges, um, planes of motion, it's continuous fluid resistance. And I can make that more challenging by going faster. I can make it more challenging by increasing the drag resistance. Uh, this company I started to do some work, work with called Hydro Revolution. And by the way, if you work with any form of athletes, these are cheat codes. These are things you can teach them and yeah. get them to buy into that will give you a unique advantage to your competitors and put them in best positions for success because we know this with athletes. The reality is what they do in the gym, like some of the best athletes I've played with, they sucked in the gym. They sucked, but they yeah, just were great sure. athletes and they for had sure. the skill of the sport. Our goal is to put their joints in the best positions and give them some form of resilience to avoid injury and be available. That's the, that's the game. Yeah. That's the game. It's not about Absolutely. getting a PR or those types of things. Those are great. Those can happen. But it's about teaching them cheat codes and helping them stay a step ahead of their competition. And competition is all about recovery. Training is, is, is secondary. I, I, I don't mean that to diminish. Absolutely. It's just a fact. And you know this as you get older. So – Going back to the open chain nature of things, uh, as, I, as I started to explore that, um, the clicks and cracks have gone away. And now I do things like the stuff I can do. I can almost do like a front lever now on a bar, pull-up bar, and I don't hear any cracking or clicking. Whereas if I tried that like three or four years ago, I could not only could I have hurt myself, but it, it, again, I don't know they say as long as it, if it can click or crack, it's fine as long as it doesn't hurt. No. Those are early stages of arthritis. People don't want to tell you that, but it is. You shouldn't have those clicks or cracks. And, and there's some things we can't reverse, but I've been blown away. Like what I've been able to do for my knees over the course of two decades has been like nothing short of a, a medical miracle. Like uh, how much flexion I can get into them now. Um, like the fact that uh, I, I, I'm like 95% on my left knee. I'm almost 100% on my right. Uh, there's still a little... Um, a little crepitus in my left knee, but I now can do some certain things to get out of it quick. But um, I've been able to, like, just doing basic leg extension flexions in the water. Like, a leg extension yeah. machine is so inferior to repeated high-frequency uh, knee flexion extensions in the water. And again, it can start with just your body weight. Then you can add ankle fins, which increase the drag resistance. And what I've done there, too, is sure. I go 4-4. Four, four. So I'll do four leg exchanges, inhale, four leg exchanges, exhale. I'll just get in the flow state, man. I'll go five, 10, 20 minutes. And I get some of the best quad hamstring pumps of my life. My, my legs sure. are literally blowing up. Um, and uh, incredible cardio. And again, ze almost zero recovery cost. So yeah. I use cheat codes now. And, and again, I think the water is, um, it, it's like it's a new frontier. Uh, the challenges are access, but there are, there's plenty of gyms and community pools you can use year round. Um, and and I, I will admit, as an introvert, I didn't start really exploring the water until I got my own pool. But this is what I'm telling you now, young men and women, this is what it's all about. You have to have a vision 
for the future. When you get old, like Uncle Baby Biscuits and Mike Robertson, <laughs> you're going to want to have a pool. Because right. there's some days, like, the cost of doing stuff on land is just too great for these aged mind and bodies and souls. So have the vision for yourself to get into the mindset. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to make sure I have water access. I've got a inflatable hot tub that's like 800 bucks. That, that's not cheap, but it's not five or $10,000. Right. My sauna, like you just got, you go starter. Again, I have like high end goals for my sauna long-term. Right now it looks like a phone booth. Sure. <laughs> like it, it's kind of budget, <laughs> but it works. And uh, yeah. so, so what I'm saying is the sooner you can get into the water, the better. Don't wait till you're in pain. But I will say, I, I, I believe the only way we can really truly get people out of pain is we, we have to find a way to get them into water. Because water allows you to, the traction and the decompression, the fluid drag resistance, the, the ability to take uh, 90 plus percent of the impact forces away and uh, the added su support and stability it provides. To one, like one thing I do too, if I want to try something new, instead of doing it on land, I usually take it to the water. Because again, I, I'm like a kid in there, whether it be skater jumps or skips uh, or uh, any variety of movements oh, I, I can do in there. Um, I get an enhanced training effect. I can play without cost. I can improvise. And then I can also do things that like the day before I film, I usually run through it in water. Because yeah. my, my here's another thing I too, like right? I, I, uh, th this is a good story I'll share. Tony Jeffries, who we both know, uh, or I know you know mm -hmm. your friend Luca knows because he used to go to the, the gym. Yep. Uh, I like I want to learn how to box. I always love boxing. I go in the first day, first ten minutes, bro. Like because you know it's all ego. I'm like I'm throwing bombs, but we yeah. got 50 <laughs> minutes left and I'm done. I'm cooked because boxing yeah, is absolutely. all about breathing, and boxing exposes people that are very strong and muscular because the the issue with strength training. This is the dirty secret about strength training, guys. Listen, I know some of you strength coaches are going to they're going to turn off the podcast. It makes you tight. <laughs> okay? It makes you that's the exchange. Yeah. Strength has to come with yeah. excessive muscle tone and tightness. Um, and it requires yeah. extensive warm-ups and cool-downs and recovery work that other modes of exercise don't. So if you're okay with that, that's fine. But if you're not willing to put in the bookend aspect of the strength work, it will destroy your body like it did mine. I got tight, restricted, and, and the imbalances I had, uh, it took so much time to get out of them because of that that that, that restriction and that tightness. So what was, what was I talking about? Oh, the boxing, right? So, um, yeah, dude, I was exposed. I was just exposed. I'm like, I thought I was fit. I'm shredded. Like, how come right. I am so unathletic and I have no coordination or rhythm? And again, again, that's the thing. We don't train these things. Um, so for me, like... Uh, and I encourage all people, like, I, I think I think boxing, like, if you're a trainer or coach, the other reason I want to do boxing, too, is because of at-home fitness. Tell tell me if there's a – what do you know is a better option? There's no equipment. You can do it in a six-by-six-foot space, at-home hotel room, all planes of motion, yep. fast-switch, low-impact yep. fiber work than boxing. Also, the hip rotation, Great the trunk you, rotation. Okay. Um, and, again, I train in both stances because if you don't, you get an imbalance. So um, sure. beyond self-defense, how can we look at someone in the face and say, you have a complete physical education program if we haven't taught you how to defend yourself? I'm not saying you're going to be MMA or Mike Tyson, but right. people that do my stuff, is I, I pity the fool that breaks into their house, okay? Because they, they yeah. know how to throw <laughs> hands and feet from both stances with power, speed, uh, with confidence. So um, that to me was like, oh, wow, like, my whole concept of fitness started to change because um, you, if you go into, like they would say this too, if you fo follow MMA or you, well, like, you listen to fighters talk, when, they, when they're fighting someone and they see them start to breathe through the mouth, they know that they, they've won. Oh, yeah. You know they're what I'm gassed. saying? Because yeah, they're uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of, you look at my, my wall of greatness, Ali, Bruce Lee, oh, yes. Tyson, um, someone named yeah. BJ Gador over there. Uh, but yes. the... Uh, <laughs> You know, Tyson was ferocious, um, but Bruce Lee, again, I, I go back to it, like the ability to, quote unquote, cold, relaxed, express like raw physicality has always intrigued me. Um, and that's yes. really what it's all about when it comes to boxing, relaxed, but also 
um, training those fast twitch fibers. And by the way, I made the most progress with my boxing when I took it into the water because it is a fluid medium. If you are stiff and you try to overcome stiffness on land, it's very difficult. But in the water, the fluidity, you're forced. You're for, like you're literally feeling your feet pivot and rotate. There, there's resistance coming into your hips as they pivot and rotate. Um, so um, hydrotherapy is, is something I think, uh, it's something I, I'm investing at least in uh, 30 to 60 minutes a day into the pool because I, I, I know my aging audience is going to need this, but I'm also doing the best I can to get people under 40 to start buying into this now. Um, just still do what you want to do on land, but at least maybe add this instead of doing an extra land workout on your off days. Like people say, do, do a strength workout, then do a, a hit or a Metcon the next day. Well, yeah, if you're looking for four to six weeks to get in the best shape of your life, I know firsthand that's sure. going to work, but th That'll that's going to destroy your body long term. Um, so embrace cheat codes, embrace regressions, milk them for everything it's worth. It, it doesn't have to be as hard as people think it needs to be in terms of like, like you don't get a badge for doing a workout that is 10 times more impact forces on your knees. What you get the right. badge for is right. showing up and showing out. Yeah, I love it. Okay, man, I got time for one more because a certain 10 year old broke his glasses and I need to take him to get <laughs> new glasses after this. But but I wanna to touch on this because just kind of putting the the cherry on top of mobility and recovery is mobility and you, you know you use the term calisthenics when you're a kid calisthenics just sounds like something dumb you do in gym class but now it sounds kind of cool you know you're a little bit older you're thinking oh no like being able to move like maybe gymnastics movements so just talk to me about where like mobility training calisthenic training that sort of piece of the puzzle fits into what you're doing these days awesome question um and th this is like I, I cannot stress this enough to people listening this this has transformed uh, my fitness and, and how I look at things in the gym. And what I mean by a full body calisthenic, and again, this also comes to the fact like getting rid of ego, being okay to self-assist because self-assistance unlocks, it's a cheat code. And what I mean by that, let me give one example, yeah. right? So typically, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of both, a hang and a deep squat. You yep. pair, like, There's two things to give someone to do every single day. I don't know if anyone can argue there's two better investments of your time outside of walking. Like if I say sure. three things to get people doing right away, daily hang, daily uh, squat mobility, and then just walk, walk for God's sakes. But it's also, that's also multiple things. So what I try to do is what can we, how can I combine, right? So let's look at this. I'm going to give you two things quick. And these are simple yeah. things you can do at home, at your office, go to the gym. So here, I got this, these equalizers. So we know the dip is the king of, you know, upper body, whatever you want to call upper body push. Or, um, and we know the split squat is arguably more effective than the squat squat to building the legs because now we're fixing the balance between sides. Uh, lighter weight goes a longer way, sure. makes light weight feel heavy. So when I use this position, so I'm in a split squat right now. Let me tilt it down just a little bit. Yep. Yep. Now I can go for five or 10 minutes like this. And what can I do? So maybe I want to stress my upper body more. So now I'm, I'm in the mindset of now my legs are going to assist my arms. So I'm here and I'm just working on my position. I, by the way, if you have a mirror, this is great too. Because I could see maybe I'm, you know, yep. play around. There's no right or wrong when we're doing mobility. Play around. Pulse. I can also work on my, you know, scap shrugs here. All right. And then I can say, you know what? I'm going to shift to my legs now. So now I'm making my legs work. And you know what people don't do with the split squat? Because they rush through it, they go fast. It, 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 it's, it, is, is it single leg? No, it's a, it's a double-legged exercise. The pistol squat is the only sure. single-legged exercise. So maybe I want to play sure. around with emphasizing my back leg more. And I'm going to really focus on my foot and toe contact. And I'm going to pulse. And I, I really want to feel, by the way, what, as someone who suffered from knee pain, it was really the back knee that was problematic because my low quads were weak. Yeah. And my patella was not tracking properly. It was also because my feet sucked. I couldn't get my toes wide enough. There was no <laughs> big toe grip. So I actually, because I'm assisting here, 
I'm 200 pounds, but I can make this so only 30 pounds is working, but I can also ramp up to 100, and eventually I can just take my arms away, and now I'm doing the same thing I was doing previously. But if I started there, it would hurt, or I would start to compromise my breathing. I can also then say I'm going to go a little more front leg, all right? And I can work in slam boards mm -hmm. with this too. But what I'm saying is, uh, again, like, this is where you start to make it fun. I'll just, like, play a song. So, you know, it's, it, it's an hour, hits. I look up. You know what? I've been sitting here for an hour. I put on, put on a song, and I just I flow on this for three minutes. And what did I do? Yeah. I worked my dip. So I worked, I worked my, my upper body at an extreme joint angle. All right. I, I built, I'm building my chest, my shoulders, my arms, because I'm going for a long period of time. And I'm also opening up my hips, building my thighs. The other piece too, and this is like, this is like, I'm going to give you one stretch because again, we talk about what can you do to reverse. Do you see it? Okay. So I've got my little pull yeah, here. Good. I've got the, the uh, not, uh, what do they call it? 90 degree angle handles. They're like okay. little mini gymnastics rings. Let me actually bring it close so they can see it. So here we go. Yeah. Here's the setup. No, those are cool. I've never I've seen those. Slant board. These are the angles 90. So you can hook them on the bar just to allow you to get that shoulder rotation. And also, this is just so easy on the hands. One of the biggest issues with hangs is over gripping, which does what? It causes that elbow tendonitis. So I, I, I try to do as much sure. hanging like a monkey, like a really smooth grip. I try not to let the, like if you go like this, What's going to happen? You're going to drive elbow flexion. When I hook, sure. now I can really focus on the shoulder joint. But So here's what I'm doing. I can work my deep squat, and I can work on my overhead arms position. The two things we lose when we sit. So here we go. I play a song. I just go for time, and I can sink all the way down. I can shift side to side. I can rotate. I can say, you know what? I'm going to do some shrugging. <sighs> Inhale down. Exhale up. Then I'm going to say, you know what? I want to shift it from the, the shoulder to the lower body. And now I'm going to do some deep pulsing squat. Exhale up, inhale down. The, the hands are assisting, but now my legs are doing the work. And I can say, you know what? I want to go to one leg. I'll do some pistol switches. So I can also do some, one of my favorite. <laughs> you want to pump, set the clock for two or three minutes. Slow up, slow down. Inhale down, exhale up. Now you can decide, what, 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 you want to do 50-50, so 50 legs, 50 arms. Or you want to go just use the legs to assist and make this like what would be a three minute pull up set. Or maybe I want this to be just like, and by the way, what can I do here too? I can move into the sissy squat. Now I'm here, yeah. I can work on hip extension. I can work on pulsing at this extreme joint angle to get my low quads recruited. I can shift back here. And again, just go right into some more work. So again, when you, when you try to do something, it's, it's one thing, but so many things can happen, right? Shoulder mobility. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a pump right now from just, just the time under tension. But again, it's something that kind of warms you up into a workout, and it's one thing. So, um, you know, those, those two things I probably do the most often now. It's that kind of split squat dip. And again, it's, it's full body. And then sometimes you yeah. get to the point with this, Mike, where... <laughs> to me, like you transcend when you don't when you when you don't feel any one thing because the whole body is working in one unison, and this is what like yep. the best like when you look at Michael Jordan, I don't think Michael Jordan ever felt a muscle work because Michael Jordan's athletic yeah. ability was everything was he put his whole body into all of his movements. It was just he was one body, and I think one of the issues yeah. we have because of how um, you know. This kind of started the modern era of, and I, look, I, I think bodybuilding is awesome. I love to get a pump. Yeah. And again, one of my favorite workouts in yeah. the pool. I mean, let me leave you guys with this. This is my current hydrotherapy workout. I do two minutes on 30 seconds off, hot and then cold. So I'm just bouncing between, this is a 20 minute workout that like you're getting breathing, you're getting recovery, you're getting muscle pumps, you're getting heart pumps and no, impact on the joints so to me this is like the ultimate cheat code and this is where i'm right now i'm trying to be super creative i want to have fun i don't want to beat myself down i'm in holiday mode but i'm also in like let's get that money mode okay for the new year um <laughs> right so right in the hot tub which is ground based i can do 
I can do any sort of uh, stretching or I can just do some box breathing. Two minutes, I have 30 seconds to go from the hot tub to the cold tub. So one day I was just doing, and then, and then I do two minutes in the cold, 30 seconds back. So it's, it's basically eight total rounds, four rounds in hot, four rounds in uh, cold. And uh, in the cold, I'm doing muscle work, not only so I can survive the cold, but because I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, again, maintain, if not build my fitness in the water. Um, so just, I've got these water bells you can hold and I just go nonstop. And I, I can, because of how easy it is on the elbow, I can, I can, and I, I start slow kind of dragging the water. I feel the water every rep. Then I, then I have some fast explosive reps. Then I'm changing the grip, forearms, brachialis, more bicep. I can add the yeah. rotational aspect. So I'm getting this crazy pump and then I go back to the heat. So that's, that's like my go-to. Again, it's only 20 minutes and I feel like 20 minutes. We talk about training. That is not only the minimum effective dose, I think, to max things out, but also I feel like that's the break you got to put in yourself uh, over 35. I could, there's some days, maybe once a week, you can say I'm going to go 40 to 60 plus minutes. I'm just going to test myself or I have the time to make it like a half day, right? Right. But right. the reality is if you can't get the effect in 20 minutes, something's up with your workout and or your effort. Enjoy your overall approach. So that's the discipline, right? To put these breaks on yourself. And again, if you're using cheat codes, um, it doesn't matter as much. But th th that's kind of the challenge on this too. T people don't spend enough time and they try to get through the set as fast as possible. The, uh, the, the other way to do it, and this is where you actually start to have fun with this, because you can play you can play some music. You find yourself all of a sudden like, I'll be doing stuff too. And this is especially if I have some weed. I start to catch to the rhythm of the song and then my a pulse to the beat and you know it just makes right. it fun man like i, I don't want to crush myself anymore i do want to have fun I, there's i've already already done like you so many things i don't want to do on a day like, i gotta every time right. i'm on social media i don't want to do that um but I, right. I, I, as long <laughs> as i need to make money i, I have to do it so um but the yep. self-assisted split squat dip and the self-assisted uh I pull up that. deep squat those are two things that you can three to five minute investment to, to warm up and cool down your athletes, give them uh, on off days. And by the way, um, this is what I was talking about. Just one last thing, because this is very important. I know you got to take your child. Yeah. I know your child has to go to the uh, thing here, but I, I just have to show you He's what I mean. He's got have glasses, man. The audience here, self-assisted. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. So almost all the stuff I do, like not all, I would say eight out of 10 sets. I, I do self-assisted. Okay, okay, so again, my favorite way is wide grip underhand because that's lining up the shoulder joint okay. and external rotation. It's the best way to mobilize the shoulder girdle. So I'll go super wide. And you just start here. Maybe a little side-to-side -side shift, some basic shrugs, and then I can start to do some twists or some split positions, wind up. Like the amount of benefits I can get in these positions and then a lot of times too, because I'm doing this, I'm warming up into it. Again, I can work on my feet, my hips, overall hip and spinal rotation. And then when you can start to do some, you can see how much range of motion I'm taking myself to. So, and I'll be on here for a couple minutes and then I'll decide to come up. So what I'm saying is like, the foundation of everything is just getting Comfortable on the bar, breathing, and getting to the point where like once you can spend two or three minutes on the bar, and then you can start to add strength skills on top of that. But again, you want to master the push-up, you must first master the plank. You want to master the pull-up, you must first master the hang. So these are just simple tactics yeah. that again we, we we've we've complicated things. We have to make the same thing sure. feel you know different or new. But, but or new. Yeah. There, there's endless hang variations and there's endless ways you can combine it with other things. So, um, by the way, you can see, I, I have a, like, look at the pump. That, that was a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. But you can get, you yeah. can get the, the muscle work, the strength work at the same time too. So that's why I, I get, again, I I think strength is great, but mobility over everything and then let everything else come off of yeah. your mobility focus. And, and I think those long, two to three plus minute sets are what it's all about.
Yeah. That's your foundation, dude. Like you said, if you can't get in the right positions, you're just layering strength or power output or conditioning or something on top of a bad exactly. foundation. And this is, about, so, this is the stuff that you've been talking about for years, it. man. It's an honor to be here. And those listening, yeah. like yeah. Mike Robertson is the pro's pro. I mean, man, like you, Thanks, you're a dude. gift to the industry. When I think about like, when faces come to mind of like, what is this industry all about? What does it need moving forward? What, what, like what has allowed us to get, you know, there's good and the bad and the ugly of this space, but I believe people like you are where we find the good. And uh, you guys are, are in the best Thank of you, hands man. with Mike Robertson. I, I will always have your back, man. And uh, it's just a pleasure being here. I love it. I love it. Well, tell everybody, where can they find out more about you? I know you're cranking out content. You got the website. We'll have to get you on for a second one because, look, dude, I'm just looking ahead. Man, there were like seven questions, I think, still. <laughs> so we'll have to do another one that's just like business, social media, content creation. But for right now, where can people find more about you and all the great work uh, that well, you're I'm, doing? I'm at BJ Gadour, B-J-G-A-D-D-O-U-R on all social media outlets and Grindr. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to get one on my um, – I also have uh, <laughs> the cleverly named the BJ Gador podcast on iTunes and Spotify, wherever you listen. Um, and I do have a with, 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 the, with the homie, Pat Rigsby, and also Justin Ewell. I'm coming out with a, a product called Online Workout Automator. And basically, I, I, I just I put a year of my life into this, man. Uh, it's, it's piggybacking on 20 years of, of, of experience in the online streaming home workout space. I'm literally giving you one year of subscription slash online product content to use as you deem fit. I give you the ability to rebrand it. Um, you, you can you can take my name off of it. Um, again, like here's, <laughs> we talked about this, 50% of these people will be out of the industry or have left. Uh, and then in six months, a lot of people are just leaving. So it's going to take guys like you and I, yeah. the OGs in the space, to pass on the knowledge. I'm not a zealot. I don't like, I, I, what's so sad about this industry, man, again, I'll try to close this out for you. But what I hate about this industry, yeah. I don't like zealots. I don't like cults, but that's what has found success. It's all people that always break through. Yeah. It, it you know, they name exercises after themselves. They, uh, you know, they try to create these cult followings. And again, you know, marketing is marketing, but, uh, this, there's, there's, there is not much new in this space. And the reality is we're just passing things down to the next generation. And you keep trying to raise that bar. So every time we pass it, we all get better. Um, and and th this industry needs people like you and I to show them how to make enough money to stay in this space. And yeah. ultimately, again, don't forget what this is all about. This is about you. This is about me. This is about them loving fitness and trying to do exactly what they want in life using fitness as a vehicle to help other people make a change. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is it can unlock the ideal lifestyle. And if you're not happy, yeah, you're not going to make quality content programs and or have the right energy to elevate the people in your life, in your gym, on your team. So I believe being selfish is, is typically a negative thing. Um, but I don't when I when, when I think about business, um, it, it's all it's all about what serves me first, and then I'm just going to find the people that yeah. are willing to buy into that, versus trying to convince people, yeah. which we know we can't do. You can do it for like six weeks, but you know. Doesn't so work. that product, I, I'm really hoping um, it's a fraction of the cost uh, that it took for me to make it, and um, again, 90 full scale instructional and follow along workouts. And progressive over the course of the year with an advanced muscle gain track. All the workouts themselves are 20 minutes using minimal equipment. So, um, you know, if you're someone looking to, and, and I, I partner with Pat because he's going to give you all the business resources to take it to the next level. Because yeah. I don't have the business acumen because I spend so much time in the weeds with the programming. Um, but that's me, yep. you know, and that's part of this too. I, I'll leave the yeah. trainers with this. People say this, like, you got to, you know, you got to do, you know, you got to find your unique path and be okay with whatever it is that are your gifts. Like, look, I'd love people to sing and dance. I got some work to do on those ends. For some reason, I was gifted right. with, with a mind that was like 
ideal for this space or, you know, making content. And um, it's not sexy. It's, it's maybe not something I would have asked God for at, at, at creation. But uh, you know what? You right. got to accept your gifts and you got to find a lane that you can you can drive through, not just for the next couple of years, but for the rest of your life. And that's tough to have that perspective when you're young, because when you're young, you want to do whatever it takes. And I get it. That's that's how I was. That's sure. how Mike was. Whatever it takes. You eat yep. shit and you do whatever it takes to survive. And but along the way, like, do you think I wanted to be at Men's Health? Do you really think I wanted to be at Men's Health? I, I went to Men's Health so I get on the cover. Right. And I went to Men's Health so I can get, get right. the following to, to, to take my, my family's lifestyle to the next level. I was miserable while I was there because I first time in my life I have a salary, which means like, come on. Right. I make my own money on my own terms. I don't like being limited. And right. then I got to work with people that are not on my level. Frankly, I can do this right. myself. I got in trouble one time because I got us on Good Morning America and I didn't run through their, their PR person who couldn't give me any fucking PR, I'm sorry, any <laughs> PR gigs. I'm yeah. getting fired up, Mike. Yeah. What I'm telling you guys is <laughs> let's make this fun again. Build this exactly the way you want it. And then, yeah, find some role models like Mike Robertson, but also don't copy Mike Robertson. You'll never be. You'll never be Mike Robertson. you got to yeah. be whoever you are. That's good advice. Yep. I love it, man. I love it. BJ, this has been amazing, dude. Thank you so much for your time, Thank brother. You. I appreciate, appreciate it, man. It's an honor to be here. And uh, to all those listening, happy holidays. Happy holidays!